All right, Harley. Pick up your blanket and anything else you've got laying around. It's time to move you out of here. Harley looked alarmed. Move me out of here? You just put me in this stinking smokehouse. Where am I going? You're going to a better place. You'll be better off than you are here. Harley backed away from the door. Yeah, hold on now. You just can't hang a man without giving him a trial, and I ain't had no trial. You're supposed to be an officer of the law. It's your job to see I get to Fort Smith all right. Me and Tom Freeman never had no grudge against you. It was only for the money. $200 to shoot you and the other deputy. Realizing that was a foolish thing to admit to, he tried to soften it with a lie. Uh, me and Tom had us an agreement. Neither one of us was going to shoot to kill. We were just going to wound you and see if Tiny would pay us for that. Will said nothing, content to let the frightened man rattle on. He was amazed to hear this outright confession that named McGee as the instigator of the attempted dry gulch. Whatever gave you the idea I was fixing to hang you? I never said anything about hanging you. I'm just moving you to a bigger place where I think you'll be a little more comfortable. Oh. Now, pick up your blanket and that straw tick. Will pointed to one of the two pallets that served for beds. Harley was quick to obey his commands, even showing a spark of enthusiasm for the job now that he realized he wasn't on his way to a rope over a limb. Once Will had marched Harley over to the new jail, he locked him inside the back room. I'll get you a bucket of water and an empty bucket from the other place. Then I'll see about getting you set up with Lottie Mabry to furnish your meals while you're in here. About time for one now, ain't it? Harley's question created a problem Will hadn't thought about till then. The new jail was working out nicely, but for one thing, he would have to be there to unlock the door every time Harley had to be fed. It'll be a while yet. You'll get two meals a day, breakfast and supper, and it ain't quite time for supper. 